just got back from a walk with my two-year-old and we saw a bunch of mulberries, so came back to get a basket. Let's go get some mulberries. If I had known there were this many um, ripe berries, I think I would have brought a sheet and just laid a sheet out and then just shook the branches. When you go to pick them, they don't just like pick off, they mostly like fall off. So it's best to just put a, something underneath them and then just kind of go like that and they all just fall off into whatever you have underneath them. Some of them are getting in the basket. A bunch of them are getting on the ground. Oh my goodness. What are you doing? You squishing them? You squishing them? Got a little bit of thunder. It's starting to sprinkle a little bit, but I do not want to go in until I pick more of these. So the first time I saw mulberry trees, I actually didn't know what they were and I had to search online and I was like, blackberry trees. So I was like, they look like blackberries, but they're not and they're growing on trees. What are these? They're mulberries. There's a lot of them growing on the property. Here's one here. There's a lot just grow locally, just everywhere. So they're down by the road, they're down in the back, they're here on the fence. First thing I made with them was mulberry pie and I made one this year and it was spectacular. There are just so many. You might have to come back with a sheet, bud. Yeah, they're all the way up there. Look at that. Wow. Look, guys, look what I found. Ah. Are these, these are black raspberries, right? Are these black, they're not blackberries, are they? Are they blackberries? Those look like black raspberries to me. So just a bountiful harvest. Here's some mulberries. What do you think? Are they good? Yeah. It's back when I worked my, my old job, which had somewhat long hours and a long commute. I didn't really ever see our property in the daylight. I feel like I was gone before the sun came up. I came home and it was dark. I never saw anything. So I had bought like two blackberry bushes and planted them and I was so excited that we were gonna have blackberries. And then after I quit my job, I walked around our property and realized that there were blackberry bushes, wild blackberry bushes all around our property. And I was just like, man, I have just been missing so much, just like being stuck in this job all day long. Yeah. Okay, this was actually had blown off of our garden. Come back here, so we're just gonna put this out. Okay, ready? I'm gonna shake the, shake the tree and see if it, See how many fall on here. Woo! See them all falling? Where do you want to go? You're going to carry it? Okay. I'm carrying it. Where are you carrying back it? Over. Back over there. All right, let's go. All right, it's down this way. Yeah, that's like, looks like part of a deer, a baby deer. Okay, so were the coyotes like in our backyard? Getting a little close for comfort for me. I love it when I look in the burn pile and see things I want, like that trellis or that huge stump thing. Oh, I want to Look at my hands. Nice. I seeing all the wildflowers that pop up in the back. So let's have a discussion here between uh, poisonous and non-poisonous plants. So sometimes there can be some confusion with Queen Anne's Lace, which this is not, and Hemlock, which is also not, and Yarrow. So this is Yarrow. I am fairly certain this is yarrow. Um, I'm looking at the leaves, looking at mostly just the, the way that the flower is formed. I feel like hemlock looks a lot more like Queen Anne's lace and that it has more of a distinct pattern of the flowers. Queen Anne's lace is very tall and looks very distinct to me. What is that? Like what is going on here? Is that thing alive? Is he alive? B, are you alive? Did you die? You're like covered in pollen. Are you drunk? Okay, we have to, we have to know. Are you alive? He's not moving, but hmm. Even though I'm fairly certain that that's yarrow, and I'm gonna look it up some more online, I'm still not gonna pick it or do anything with it. Not until I'm certain. <laughs> This is now just like a clover and grass field. I kind of want to pick some of these and dry them. I've never done dried flowers before, so I need to practice. The storm got us. 
It's raining, but it feels good. You know, the I remember the other night, I remember hearing those coyotes, and they sounded really close, and I remember going, looking outside, and I didn't see anything, but I remember thinking, they sound really close tonight. We're gonna rinse them and pick through, try to get out any leaves or twigs and bugs. And I hate to tell you this, but if you're eating wild berries, you're probably eating bugs. I watched a video with Jess from Roots and Refuge Farm here on YouTube. She's a great channel, you should check her out. And I remember her saying, if the bugs won't eat it, why should I? And I agree. So if you have bugs on your food, that's that's good. It means it's not been sprayed with like chemicals and stuff. So I have no idea if this is a good thing to do or not, but I have a bowl of water here that I'm putting them in and then find the twigs and the, and the bugs tend to float. So that way I can pull them out. <laughs> So I remember one question I had when I first used millberries was, uh, what about the stem? Cause they do have little tiny um, stems on them as you can see. And I was like, do I have to pick all these off? The answer is no. I, <laughs> this is a, it's half eaten now, this is a pie. Uh, there are a little bit of seeds in there that you can see, but the stems really, I mean, they, you can still see them a little bit, but you do not even notice them. When you were eating, they're not like anything bad. Just leave them on. Also, I made this pie and then my family informed me that fruit pies should have a top crust. So now I'm genuinely wondering, fruit pies, do they always need a top crust? What do you think? My lattice work is terrible. It would have looked super ugly. So normally I just don't put a top on it because it looks so bad. But do you put a, do you put a top on your pies? Yes or no? Let me know in the comments. Are you team top crust or team no top? Okay, we ended up with 12 cups of mulberries. So I wanna go ahead and make syrup. I definitely wanna make a bunch of jams or jellies this year, but one thing I haven't tried is syrup. And one of the reasons why I wanna do this is we really like pancakes and waffles here, but maple syrup costs a lot of money. I feel like it's, it's really expensive. And I mean, it should be, it's labor intensive. And I mean, a lot goes into it, but it'd be great if we could make some syrups here and that would be wonderful. Okay, all the online people who seem to know what they're talking about say you need one cup of sugar for every three cups of berries. So 12 divided by three, we need four cups of sugar. I feel like once you start making this stuff yourself, you realize how much sugar goes into everything. It's kind of obscene. That's only two cups, guys. I'm cutting it a little short. Like that one, one fourth of a cup is gonna save us all from, you know, diabetes, but whatever. Oh my goodness. All right, they say to just stir it up, cook it, add some lemon juice and see what happens. I remember at my grandma's house when we were very young, we would go and pick raspberries and then she would make raspberry syrup for us. And then there'd also just be some raspberries they would put sugar on and leave out. And we could put those on our ice cream. Guys, this looks so yummy. I just tried one, it's so good. It was a far cry from when I had to eat radishes for a week. This is, this is so good. Okay, so now the recipes I'm looking at say you should do the berries first and then add the sugar after you mush up and strain it. But you know what? This is this is exactly how my cooking normally goes. So just do something and then find out the right way to do it. But we're just gonna roll with it. It'll be fine. All right, so while the uh, syrup is cooking and it's raining outside, I've put on a bunch of comfy clothes and I figure we just sit here for a minute and chat about garlic. So I have never grown garlic before this year. And actually it was a late decision. All of a sudden I was seeing all my friends online planting garlic and I was like, I wanna plant garlic. And then I went to, went to some online shops and they were either sold out of all their garlic or the ones they had were really expensive. And I was like, well, I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to grow this garlic and I don't wanna pay this much money for something if it's not gonna work. I just don't wanna lay down the investment. So what I did is I just went to the store, I actually sent my husband to the store and I was like, buy a bunch of garlic. And he was like, what? And I was like, just do it. He bought a bunch of garlic. Then I sat down with my two-year-old and we, uh, broke apart all the little cloves and then we went out and we just planted them in a bed in the garlic in the garden and they grew. I didn't know anything about garlic at all and since then I've learned a little bit. Obviously I'm not a garlic master because this is my first year and all I've grown is supermarket garlic. But number one, you can grow supermarket garlic. I just did, it worked. But now that I've done that, now I wanna grow interesting types of garlic. So if you go online and go to a garlic store online, there are hundreds of types of garlic. Like I did not even realize how many different types of garlic there are. I only knew of, you know, garlic that you get at the store and maybe elephant garlic. 
that was all I knew about. But no, there are tons of different types of garlic. There's two basic categories of garlic. There's hard neck garlic and soft neck garlic. This is what I know about these types of garlic. Number one, the supermarket garlic I grew was a hard neck garlic. They send up a center stem that then turns into a scape, which is the flowering part that you can cut off and eat, and which I did, and it was delicious. Also, they can be grown in colder areas, and they don't store as long as the soft neck garlic. So soft neck garlic does not send up the scape. The stems are more floppy, and it grows in warmer climates, but it stores well. They say it'll store, you know, six months to a year which I am very interested in. But the other cool thing about soft neck garlic is you can braid it and make those pretty braids, you know, of garlic, which I absolutely wanted to do. So I was like, I am going to braid my garlic without knowing anything about braiding garlic. So I'll show you my first attempt. Yeah, so then I went back and I actually watched a YouTube video of how you braid garlic and then I tried again. So here is one of the braids of garlic that I made. Now I'll have you know, everyone was telling me, you don't braid hard neck garlic, you can't braid hard neck garlic. Well, I'm here to tell you that you, you can if you try hard enough. <laughs> it's not as pretty, um, they won't store as long as soft neck garlic, but I don't care, I wanted a braid of garlic. So here's one of my braids of garlic. I think it's pretty. <laughs> is it as pretty as the pictures that I saw? No, but it is pretty to me. This makes me so happy, guys. It is so ridiculous how happy this braid of garlic makes me. So I'm definitely looking for some soft neck varieties because one of my friends on Instagram who is a flower farmer, she actually grew a whole bunch of garlic this year. She grew soft neck garlic and it's because she's going to make braids and then put dried flowers in it and sell them because, and I just thought, that is the smartest idea. Now I'm not gonna go out and sell them, but I am definitely going to do that for myself and maybe give some to friends. Like what a great gift to give someone because everybody uses garlic, culinary and beauty. I don't know, I got excited about it. So I'm, I am super excited about garlic now. So I'm asking for help. If you have a favorite type of garlic, please leave it in the comments. Tell me so that I know what I should order and so that everybody else here knows what they should order. That's my garlic story. Well, it's kind of dark, but I've been hanging them, hanging them up here on the door. This is where they are. Although it looks like this, it makes me feel like in in like a, a kitchen with all the, the lavender hanging and garlic hanging, or maybe I'm in the 1800s and I have an awesome kitchen full of herbs and stuff. Like this just makes me so excited. Back over to see how our syrup is doing. Okay, I decided to blend it up first in my blender and then strain it with this strainer. Okay, hooray, so exciting. I think we're done. All right, this is what it came down to. You know what's interesting is it seems almost like it's jollying up, like kind of like blackberries have a lot of natural pectin. I have a feeling that mulberries do as well. So I feel like making jam actually wouldn't be very hard, kind of in between a syrup and a jam. All right, guys, all done. So 12 cups of mulberries made us a little over one quart of syrup. I am super pumped about the mulberry syrup. As the blackberries and the raspberries roll in here, I'm sure I'll be doing something with those and we're definitely gonna keep collecting mulberries, probably make some jelly and some stuff with it. So thanks for hanging out with me on this rainy day and I'll see you next time. You climbing up that fence? What are you eating all the berries? <laughs>